of Biotechnica. Welcome to another video. So today in this video, I'll be talking about how to make a career in regulatory affairs after pursuing your MSc in biotechnology or life sciences. We have questions based on this one. Many people were asking about this regulatory affairs officer. How do I have to become after my MSc? So if you're someone, then this video is for you. So look around the complete video so that you'll be benefited. So click onto the subscribe button as well as onto the bell icon so that you get notified every time we post a video exclusively for all of you. This is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. So now let's get started to the video. So now let's talk about what is this regulatory affairs department when we talk in case of any biopharma company or pharmaceutical company or any life science company if you see there will always be a department called as regulatory affairs department so this regulatory affairs department is most important or a vital role it plays in any life science company but what do they do in that department they are the one who will ensure the safe and effective making of health products suppose if you're talking about any drug pharmaceutical drugs or any sort of medical devices that they are manufacturing in that company so they will check whether the drug is in the form of safe uh, is it good enough for the uh, people to have those drugs back again or how this healthcare product is going to be useful for the community according to the regulation it has been well designed or not so accordingly they will check in this regulatory affairs department and all the companies will certify that the products that they produce suppose let's talk about any medical devices that they are manufacturing like suppose you can uh, imagine a spigmanometer they are producing it or any sort of medical devices they are manufacturing it they will always have to give a certificate that the products are very very good or it is very fit for any kind of purposes or it is going to be contributing to the um, human mankind also so companies will certify these things so this will usually happens in regulatory affairs department i'll be talking about the quality control and regulatory affairs department usually works hand in hand together so i'll be talking about that also in detail the next question comes for us is what does regulatory affairs professional or regulatory professionals do in the department so first thing what they'll do is they approve the packaging or let's talk about this one first they are the one who checks the product produced meet the requirement regulation they have a certain set of regulation which a regulatory affairs officer has to read when they start their career it will be like documents lot of documents that you have to read initially it will be kind of difficult but after that you will understand how uh, the regulations work for every product whether in case of chemistry or in case of pharma whether in case of uh, biotechnology company how it actually works so you will be checking the products that is produced in the company whether it is meeting all the required regulations it has been done so regulation and this product that is manufactured are cross checked so this work is actually done by the regulatory professionals and after that they are the one who interacts with the government authorities yes so regulatory professionals not only do that because they are the one who are going to give an approval for the product like QC used to do right that's what the same case but it's a kind of well versed uh, more than this one so they interact with the government authorities who regulate the activity of the company so they are the one who talk to the uh, government officials also and finally they are the one who will approve packaging like if a drug is coming into market how it will come actually it's like we go in for a research uh, we actually test and we produce a drug and this drug will be carried in the uh, animal sample and then it will be coming to the clinical trials so after clinical trials in the human individuals it's been run then it will be coming into the market so uh, clinical one clinical two trials will be going on and then it will come into the market before coming into the market this drug has to be given a certificate so they can uh, they they are the one who checks whether these products are been designed or manufactured according to the regulation and then only they will approve for packaging of the drug into the market so they approve the packaging and also advertising the product before a product goes into the market before it goes they are the one who approves and then only it goes which means regulatory affairs professionals plays a major role in uh, life science industry or in a biotechnology or biopharma companies or pharmaceutical company now the next question for us is where do you find this regulatory affairs professionals working you will see in pharmaceutical companies biopharmaceutical company biotechnology company 
medical device industries uh, people uh, companies which produces medical device even in cosmetics uh, consumer health and veterinary products animal products so they will be working in all these fields if you observe over there now we understood about what is this regulatory affairs officer what is this uh, position going to be now we have to talk about how is the growth rate because when we talk about any career we have to talk about how is it going to be after 10 p 10 years of duration so if we have to talk about the growth rate it is expected by 2029 8 percentage growth will take place similar to that of a molecular biologist as well as a biotechnologist 8 percentage growth will take place globally so which means you can definitely opt for this career also so now let's talk about the salary so when we talk in case of average regulatory affairs manager if i'm talking about manager in india how much is the salary you can almost see 11 lakhs for one year which means every year we can just every month we can calculate it one one lakh per month we can calculate if you're going to become a regulatory affairs manager in india okay now the next question if you're starting as a fresher as a regulatory affairs associate then how much you can earn you can earn almost four lakh for one year almost four lakh as a fresher i'm talking about it is variable according to each of the companies this is about the salary package that you can get as a regulatory affairs professional the next question come for us is which are the top companies that you can go for in india so there are certain companies which are available abroad also you can see so these are some of the companies you can see itc limited uh, paraxel and metronics novartis novartis is seen everywhere novazen and then Equia, Bharat Serum and Vaccine, of course, Amgen, Johnson Johnson, Lupin, Merck, Cohen. So there are many, many more. If you see most of the pharmaceutical company, uh, clinical research, CRO companies, or if you see in case of uh, biotechnology companies, medical device manufacturing companies, everybody used to have this regulatory affairs officer, managers or associate, many, many positions are available. Based on the experience, the positions are actually there. So it starts with regulatory affairs intern and then regulatory affairs officer, regulatory affairs associate, regulatory uh, affairs manager and then it will be going on continuously so this is the designation pattern if we have to talk in case of regulatory affairs the next question comes for us is what do i have to have what are the skills that i need to acquire and then we'll talk about the educational qualification so i'll be talking about the most important skill to become an regulatory affairs officer or any sort of thing you need to have a good analytical skill very good analytical skill because they're going to give you a product to you and you have to Check to the regulation whether it is matching or not. So you have to carefully look onto this, reviewing the process, how it is actually done, reviewing the data and identifying if any problem is not correlated with the regulation that's been there. And you need to know negotiating, like you need to talk to the people and you have to negotiate for the product that you have. And you need to have a very judgment skill and presentation skill because you're going to present your products to the market. So you need to have a presentation skill. Of course, computer management skills is most important for a regulatory affairs officer. You need to have computer skills and of course a management skill because a lot many people will be working. Okay, now let's talk about the sixth point. So the sixth point is how to become or how to make a career in regulatory affairs. So this is the most important thing that everybody has to talk about. So first thing is, of course, in India and globally, I'm going to talk about, suppose if you're not a life science candidate also, how you can become a regulatory affairs officer, I'm going to tell you. So first, let's talk about in India as well as global scenario, both the things I've taken together. So first thing is, you definitely need to have a bachelor's degree in life sciences. Most prominently, you can see most of the pharma students will be engaged in regulatory affairs but even life science candidate can also go and work as a regulatory affairs officer or associate so it definitely you need to have a bachelor's degree in life sciences which can be uh, pharmacology which can be pharmacy biology microbiology biochemistry any of these things and masters also you can have life sciences i have written very specifically msc in regulatory affairs if you have studied msc in regulatory affairs then it is very very good enough to go for this profession because it's a very specialized field but i'll be telling you without that what else you can do so msc in medical technology regulatory affairs so these are other courses which are available you can have any masters like since we are talking about life sciences or biotechnology you can also enter but if you have msc in regulatory affairs or a medical technology regulatory affairs it's a added value for you and usually when you go for any junior positions like a regulatory affairs associate 
it's enough that you have only master's degree but if you're going for clinical research as i mentioned earlier clinical research organizations if you're going to go in for like i can so usually what exactly happen is you definitely need to have a phd degree so most of the clinical research uh, if they are doing it in pharma or biotechnology company they will hire phd in life sciences with an experience in regulatory affairs management and how to become very very successful in this field i'm going to tell you you can enter into any of these field first don't have to become a regulatory affairs officer first after completing your msc in life sciences or biotechnology go for a departments where they deal with laboratory testing production department qc department qa department and practical experience in drug development this is very important you can enter into a, a production department in any of the pharma company or any of the biotechnology company or you can enter into laboratory testing department or you can become a quality control department you can enter or quality assurance department you enter and always have a practical experience in drug development why i am telling you is because of these experience you can implement the same when you're going to do a regulation for the product because if you know about how a qc work how to check the product is right or not you will never be knowing how to check for the regulation that is given for you so it is always good that you have a practical exposure in this field because you're going to deal with people who are working in qc along with that you are the one who are going to check it also so if you have this experience and then if you go for the regulatory affairs officer positions then definitely it's going to be very very easy for you to do anything most important thing whether in india or globally i'm going to talk about one certificate called as rac certificate very detail i'll show you the image also this rac certificate if anybody can do it if you are from life sciences biotechnology or non science background whatever it is if you write this examination and if you get this certificate then definitely you can become a regulatory affairs officer globally it's a certificate for you so i'll be showing you this one also so i'm showing you this website you can go on to this website and know about what is this rac certificate all about so i'm showing you this page if you go to this website you will see regulatory affairs professional society so you what they will be talking about what is this rac and they'll be talking about how to apply for this rac exam how to prepare for this rac exam how you can get the certification if you get this rac certification definitely you can work as a regulatory affairs officer globally so if you are after msc in biotechnology or life sciences i always suggest that better go for a laboratory testing department production department qc or qa and gain an experience in drug development and after that enroll yourself in writing this rac examination if you really wanted to go in for or else take up an internship that is a substitute also you can do it but rac is like more valid you can work globally also the next one mostly you can see a uh, regulatory affairs officer will be from b farm and m farm suppose if you are b farm or m farm candidate with pharmaceutical or qa as specialization some people will be studying m pharma uh, with specialization in pharmaceutics or specialization in qa so it is very good enough how you can enter into this field is suppose if you are bachelors who are watching out this video i'm going to tell you shortcut to drug regulatory affairs if you want to go for drug regulatory affairs who will be checking whether the drug can go into the market they will they are the one who approves it you can study m farm with qa because as i already mentioned if you have msc in life sciences or biotechnology or anything you always enter into any of the department like qa or qc or production or laboratory testing after gaining experience then you can go and work as a regulatory affairs officer after gaining an internship in that field so this is another easy way of entering into regulatory affairs m pharma with qa if you have a specialization along with that if you have one to two years of experience in qa then definitely you will be hired as a regulatory affairs officer so this is all about becoming a regulatory carry making a career in regulatory affairs next one what knowledge you need to have what are the knowledge you need to have i'm going to list out few important things as i already mentioned some of the skills here i'm talking about you need to know about the law and the government because you're talking about the regulation whether this can come into the market or not you need to know what are the laws legal codes court procedures when you go and work you'll be getting to know this and then government regulations presidents executive orders agency rules political processes everything you need to know in biology already you are life science candidate so you will be knowing about all the uh, things in biology of course you need to know computer and electronics like knowledge of circuit boards 
chips electronic equipments it's not necessary but if you're knowing some programming languages or some software computer hardware it's very added value for you of course you need mathematics you need to know uh, some algebra geometry calculus and their application it's far enough for you to have this much of knowledge when you go in for this one the next important thing is uh, how can you get the right experience now the question comes is yes now you know the roadmap of how to reach to this position bachelor's masters and then go into a department in qa qc and work there for 1 to 2 years or m pharma candidate with qa can work for 1 to 2 years after that if you want to be more well equipped well enough and getting into a position with a greater salary package how can you get the right experience for a regulatory affairs role i'm going to talk about internships yes so whether you have an experience in qa or qc if you have an internship in this field then definitely you can have it i'm going to talk about one important thing look for university whenever you go for msc in certain field or m pharma in certain field always check in for a university that provides you internship opportunities in regulatory affairs department there are many pharma companies who used to hire one to two months of internship to uh, to understand about this regulatory affairs department also you can apply to that uh, pharmaceutical industry or you can join a university where they provide a sandwich internship program also in india accordingly you can gain the right experience also so this is how you can actually become or make a career in the regulatory affairs after completing your msc in life sciences if you have completed msc in life sciences or biotechnology i would first suggest you to go in for qa qc production or laboratory testing department gain an experience for one year of time and after gaining an experience you can either take up a rac certificate that you want to go globally or what you can do you take up an internship program for one to two years in a regulatory affairs in any of the pharma company and then you start applying for the job so that you can easily avail whether as a regulatory affairs associate and then you will be promoted as a regulatory affairs manager where people earn more than many things so you have seen regulatory affairs manager earns almost 12 lakhs for one year which is almost 1 lakh per month so i believe that this video is helpful for you so what do you think about this video and what are the problems that you face when you are applying for regulatory affairs put it in the comment section thank you all of you for your time